So we've been talking about the um, authoritarian slide of the United States over the last many years, which goes beyond Donald Trump. It accelerated under Donald Trump, but it actually goes beyond Donald Trump. And now for the first time ever, the United States has actually been listed as a backsliding democracy. This has never happened before. The Guardian has a very interesting article about it. U.S. added to list of backsliding democracies for the first time. Visible deterioration in U.S. civil liberties began in at least 2019, says International Think Tank. This is the international idea think tank. Globally, more than one in four people live in a backsliding democracy, a proportion that rises to more than two and three when you include authoritarian or hybrid regimes, according to the Stockholm based International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance. This year, we coded the United States as backsliding for the first time, but our data suggests the backsliding episode began at least in 2019. The United States is a high performing democracy and even improved its performance in indicators of impartial administration, corruption and predictable enforcement in 2020. However, the declines in civil liberties and checks on government indicate that there are serious problems with the fundamentals of democracy. A historic turning point came in 2021 when former President Trump questioned the legitimacy of the 2020 election results. Hudson pointed to a decline in the quality of freedom of association and assembly during the summer of protests in 2020 after the police killing of George Floyd. International Idea based its assessments on 50 years of democratic indicators in 160 countries. There are three categories for democracies, uh, including those that are backsliding, hybrid governments and authoritarian regimes. Another word for a backsliding democracy is creeping authoritarianism or autocratization, democratic decay, de-democratization, a gradual decline in the quality of democracy, the opposite of democratization. If unchecked, democratic backsliding results in the state losing its democratic qualities, becoming an autocracy or an authoritarian regime. Now, there's another aspect to this. The other aspect to this is that when you talk about authoritarianism and you talk about people like Donald Trump, it is not just about what they would like to see implemented. There's this other aspect we've talked about, which Princeton has studied, which is whose goals are more likely to be made policy. And in that sense, the U.S. hasn't really been a representative democracy for a long time, wherein the the policy goals of the rich and of big corporations are far more likely to be made law than those of the average person. I mean, you know, you, you look at things like the estate tax, the estate tax in which an individual has an 11 million dollar exemption and a couple has 22 million dollars in exempt um, uh, money that they can pass to heirs, tax exempt money that benefits a very small portion of people. And yet it has been a mainstay in some form or another, to some degree or another for a long time. And we talk about so many other rules that benefit large corporations that that's been a concern for a long time. And then now, in addition, you have this now one one last thing I do want to mention about this. There's another aspect to this, which is There is the belief from some on the right that aside from freedom rankings and all these different things, that there are great things in the U.S. Like, for example, the U.S. is just the best place to be doing business, to have a business, to be an entrepreneur. That's also not true. And it's important when we talk about pros and cons, every place has pros and cons. And when we look at something like, oh, no, now the U.S. is is officially a backsliding democracy when they say, yeah, but it's like the best place to do business. That's also not true. And as one example, if you look at the open for business rankings and you actually look at what what are the places you see that it's Switzerland, number one, Panama, number two, Canada, number three, Canada, Denmark, number four, Sweden, places that the right often likes to say are nanny state pseudo socialist places rank higher for business environment than the United States, New Zealand, Norway, Ireland, many originally U.S. based businesses uh, moving operations or partially moving operations to Ireland. 
You have Finland, Netherlands, Malaysia, Australia, Belgium. It's a very, very long list before you ultimately get to the United States, which I can't even find at this point because it is quite far down the list. Latvia, Croatia. And of course, this has to do with everything from regulation to amount of paperwork and the United States ranking 45th in the open for business rankings, exactly the same as 2020. So the important thing here is when they say, well, you might point out this part that's not so good, but this other one is really good. Actually, go and look it up because it's not always the case. And of course, if you believe in openness, democracy, um, uh, anti-authoritarianism, as I do, you don't want to see the U.S. listed as a backsliding democracy for the first time. But alas, that's where we are. And this goes beyond just who's president. This has this has a lot to do with many different aspects, including surveillance, including corruption, including so many different things not going in the right direction. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. One of our sponsors is called Privacy. Privacy is a totally free service that I've been using for years. Privacy lets me create virtual payment cards with one click. And when I use the virtual card, the money is taken out of my bank account. You can create multiple cards, delete them, freeze them, set a spending limit on them. Let's say I'm signing up for a free trial and it requires a credit card. Privacy will autofill a virtual card number. And then after signing up, I can delete that virtual card. So I know I'm not going to be charged again. Something really useful and very practical. Or let's say I'm ordering food over the phone, but I left my wallet somewhere. I don't have my real credit card on me. I can use a virtual card on my privacy mobile app. But really, the best part is you're not out there exposing your real credit card number. So you're not as susceptible to data breaches and identity theft. Privacy is a totally free service and you'll get five bucks to spend when you go to privacy.com slash Pacman. The link is right underneath this video.